All right, guys, today we're talking about weightlifting and for athletic performance, and is it worth it? You know, is it a good thing for you strength coaches to be doing? As usual, the answer is it depends. You know, that's, that's the key word. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, some of the benefits and, you know, what you can expect when you teach your athletes about weightlifting. So the key is like specificity. We all know that. We all know the said principle, specific adaptation to impose demands. So velocity. So if you're a high velocity sport, you know, like uh, football, weightlifting, throwing, you know, um, and some sports are a mixture, wrestling, even soccer, uh, basketball. Anyway, high velocity is important. You know, like uh, soccer, you need a little bit of medium to high. Um, if you're a cross country athlete, you might need some at the very end, but mainly, you know, low continuous movement. Uh, each sport's a bit different. But the key is understanding the force velocity curve, and we should all be teaching on both ends. On high force, so going heavy, going fast, and then um, being able to demonstrate that power. You know, when you do force, when you increase your ability to produce force, increase your ability to, you know, move quickly, slash velocity, you should have more expression of power you should have the ability so where weight leader comes in is you're actually able to express that power there's some physiological demands neuromuscular you got your muscle spindles golgi tendon units we all know the stretch reflex you know we've all heard of that well what that is is, is muscle spindles when they're stretched they naturally contract and they also inhibit the antagonist meaning so like not only do they contract so when you do a squat a full squat your muscle your thighs quads are going to contract meanwhile your hamstrings are going to be inhibited shut down which is good you know when you sprint that's what needs to happen you know when one muscle is working the other needs to turn off and that relationship is important uh, also the golgi tendon organs which inhibit muscles you know when you plant your foot you know and you're about to snap something the golgi tendon organs will inhibit it so you just kind of like you know go limp but over time it's not good for an athlete you know, it's good if you're about to get hurt but for an athlete, they need to be strong enough to withstand that that um, force. And so the more and more, the stronger you get, the Golgi tendon organ is inhibited and allows you to produce more force against the ground to change directions. Also structural, you know, Titan, you know, that's one of those, um, those are one of those protein filaments that's related to structure, you know, specific to actin and myosin and attribute to elasticity. So you'll hear things like residual force enhancement, which is the passive contraction of a muscle following a dynamic lengthening. So like, you know, during, uh, you know, like the eccentric phase, the more dynamic, you know, the more of the residual force enhancement that you'll get. So um, it's all, yes, yeah, directly related to the magnitude of the stretch. Uh, weightlifting eccentric contractions are the most dynamic. Not to mention, there's a lot of uh, research out there that would say the faster the eccentric, the more hypertrophy to fast twitch fibers. So uh, over time, tighten becomes thicker and stiffer and causing more elasticity. Also, ligaments and tendon stiffness, which you've all heard me talk about, Dr. Keith Barr and tendons. So that's a good thing. Also, kinesthetic awareness, you know, movement through space, proprioception is a perception of awareness of the position of, of movement through uh, of the body through space. Muscle uh, spindles. GTO also uh, those those are the proprio, some of the proprioceptors that are aware of that movement through space. Of course, stability, force absorption, uh, pulling during the pull, put, you know, pushing or squatting during recovery. There's a lot of benefits. Upper body stability, power generated, uh, vertical force reduction. Well, if you do it right, um, we've all heard. Here's where most of you guys are probably why you're probably doing weightlifting, power production. You know, the first pull of the snatch, you know, you've heard anywhere from 2,173 watts all the way to um, the clean 2,123 watts. Second pull of the snatch, which is the most powerful um, part of the weightlifting, which is 3,634 watts. These are averages. And the clean, 3,475. Those are awesome. So stability throughout uh, entire range of motion, uh, that's, that's important. So we want to be able to move through full range of motion but we want to be stable it's maybe the difference most weightlifters can move as you can see ryan over here they can move well through uh, all ranges of motion however they're stable so like if you just do yoga which is awesome stability you know 
in a position like that? That would be the question. Uh, adaptation for youth uh, that, with range of motion. So I've seen youth that probably would have ended up immobile or at least not optimally mobile that ended up you know, per perfectly optimally <laughs> uh, mobile. So if you get them you know, young, your body will adapt to almost anything. But the key will be proper movement. You want them to be moving like Ryan over here. In an acceleration, that's the change of velocity divided by time. So you know, it's uh, you, you think about you know when you step on the gas, how long does it take you to get to that top speed? Uh, however, it depends on all of these benefits depend on one impulse, which is um, which is the it equals the change in momentum. We'll explain that relationship. But impulse is force times time is how long you can apply force to something so like when you're doing the clean when you um, push your feet into the floor and your body and, and the and the barbell leaves the ground you're producing force to how long can you do that before you transition to the second pull you know because the longer you can stay over the bar and drive your feet through the floor the more velocity you can create so um, so like let me explain like when it the relationship between impulse and momentum is this is you know m momentum is simply mass times velocity so like the relationship is this is if the longer I can produce force you know with the force times time the faster things will be that's the relationship the heavier or the more mass the slower things will be that's the that's the other part of the relationship so you know um, maximum velocity of a cleaner sprint relies on a athlete's ability to produce max velocity for the longest duration of time aka stay, stay over the bar or like in the start of a sprint you know coach or the your sprint coach is going to tell you to really explode out of that initial um, stance that you're in, in the blocks making sure that you're able to push against those blocks as long as possible uh, coach my coach Cav who's really good speed coach out there he's actually talked to me even about how some will drag their foot so uh, that will actually gives them longer to push against the ground. So key to proper deceleration is applying force for the longest duration of time. Uh, that means like if you're going when you catch a barbell, if I can meet it and decelerate it longer, it won't be as much of an impact in the bottom. So now you got to also understand uh, angular momentum. If you're going through a full range of motion, you see the guy in the sprinter down here, you know. As he as he's recovering his leg, he's got his heel right against his butt. So he has made his um, you know, the moment of inertia, the lengthening the lengthening of the leg as small as possible, you know, and as short as possible, making the recovery as easy, as easy as possible. So that's why full range of motion, anything, you know, with stability is going to produce the results you want because you have to be able to move through that range of motion and if you're only squatting parallel all the time odds are you probably can't do that so because you know your body muscles will start to shorten so torque it's an important one uh, it's, it refers to rotational force but you know we're really talking about the rotation that happens at the hip and at the knee as it relates to weightlifting but a moment arm is a perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force and the action of rotation. So you look up here, this is Squat University's um, uh, pick that I've borrowed. But if you look at from the hip to the knee, that length, and uh, any time if you if that length gets longer, then it's going to be harder at the hip. If the length is shorter, it's easier at the hip. So it's it's that simple. So the goal during weightlifting is to optimize, you know, all those joints at the ankle, the knee, and the hip to make you know, make it as optimal as possible and as less demand on any particular joint. So now let's take a look at this. Here's the benefits I talked about. Rate of force development. You'll see Matty, you know, he'll be driving his feet completely into the ground, creating a lot of force, a lot of power, high velocity, your muscular efficiency, and the triple joint extension that we all talk about. So that's what we're all after. But uh, depends on how we do it is, is what depends on if we're actually doing it. So 
Sports performed key, max velocity, impulse for some time. Four sequence change in momentum. We've already went over that. Momentum equals mass times velocity. If the impulse is up, velocity is up. So now, this is my point. Like, just because you've heard me talk about it, and you, it doesn't mean you should do it. Because if you're going to do it like this, then that's no good. Because he's already, the bar is even to his knee. And because he let his back round, number one, he's putting his back at risk. But number two, the, the velocity. He's, he's created no velocity whatsoever. His arms have bent. It's pulled him forward. That's also going to slow him down at the very tip top. So he's see how he's already on his heels as well. So like all these great benefits I've talked about are, are out the door of this young man. And so I covered up his face and the smiley face because I'm not trying. This is definitely not me trying to embarrass anybody. This is simply me trying to like teach you guys. So just because you hear me say it doesn't mean you should do it unless you can teach it properly. So go get. You know, go take a USA weightlifting or go to Stronger Experts and get my weightlifting course. And um, you'll learn in-depth uh, information on how to teach this. But the key is being able to use things like velocity, um, simple bar path tools that will teach you, you know, that will also quantify is this, is this movement going the way I want it to go. So, my arm we talked about, so like... If he stays over the bar and he keeps his chest up, he never puts you know tons of emphasis on his hip, nor any of his, uh, of his joints of his spine. If his that if his chest were to drop off the floor, then he would put a lot of stress on his hips and a lot of stress on all the uh, a lot of stress on all the intervertebral joints of his spine, which is no good. So. You see, like this is what I'm talking about. See, butt rises, everything now on his hip. There's nothing on his knees. The thing is, is that the quads don't have a lot of stress on them anyway. So use them as much as you can to take stress off the hips and the back. So impulse will be down. Power will be down. Because remember, power equals force times velocity. So if the velocity drops, that power that we're talking about, you're not going to be able to express. And I, it will have nothing to do with how strong one is. So in this case, the people who are out there saying that you should either be doing something super fast or going heavy, you know, are correct if this is the way you're lifting. However, if you can express it in an optimal way, then they're wrong. Because then you can be in the gym expressing power in a way that will be able to be transferred on the field. And there's just too much, um, too much of the literature out there that will state that Improving in, in weightlifting, the, the snatch, the clean, will d is directly correlated to improvements in vertical leap to 40-yard dashes, and it's just so much of a bang for your buck, like I've already talked about. And also, by the way, don't mistake oscillation for force production. Not that this young man's not strong. So, anyway, check out the new gym wear. It's the gold standard, baby. Uh, Mash 5 to get 5% off either the flex or the gym wear. Thanks for watching. All right, so the moral of the story is at the end of the day, there's a lot of bang for your buck. However, if you can't teach it like I'm teaching it, then you're not getting the benefits I get. Only teach what you are proficient at teaching, guys. It's a, it's a good one to learn, though. Um, so I recommend you know finding someone like me in your area and learning from them. You know, go to Stronger Experts and get my um, my course. You know, I will put a link once I post this thing. You guys can make it easy for you to go out and check that out. It's a great course. You know, it's gonna take you. A lot of quality time but I promise you when you're done with it you will know everything you need to know uh, also go out there and get you know a gym aware the flexes are not expensive go get one use my code mash5 you know go out there and check them out and um, quantify what you're doing don't just assume that because you you're doing a clean that you're getting all these great benefits that we're talking about make sure you know what you're doing here's my references thanks for watching